Two troopers kept a firm grip on my arms, while a third followed close behind, occasionally kicking the backs of my legs to remind me who was in charge. I tried to memorise our route back to the surface, noting wall-mounted signs, listening for speaker announcements, trying to mentally compare what I saw with the schematics I'd reviewed back on the Liberator, but it was increasingly hopeless. We seemed to reach our final destination. I braced myself for what awaited me in the control centre. It was a square room, around which half a dozen white-coated analysts stared at their information terminals. One analyst glanced up as the troopers bundled me inside. She was immediately reprimanded by her weasel-faced superior, who told her to get back to work. His name badge told me that this pompous supervisor was called Kettle. He squared up to me with the bravery of someone facing an opponent who's already pinioned between two guards. He was full of sarcasm about being confronted by the famous Blake, the scourge of the Federation. Not so impressive from what he could see. Well, you're not seeing me at my best. Kettle seized a handgun from the nearest trooper. He waved away the man's objections, telling him to get another from the armory. In fact, the troopers could all go and stand ready as an escort party for when their VIP arrived. He stepped behind me and used the handgun to prod me in the small of my back. Carol wanted to present me to Travis personally. A familiar figure looked up as we entered the office. He was sprawled in the chair on the opposite side of an antique wooden desk. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Travis? I could say the same about you, Blake. Oh, Travis. I thought you were always expecting to catch me. You're very smart, Blake, for a dead man.